Most people have goals. They want to be fit. They want to be healthy. They want to have great relationships with their friends and family. But what separates those who accomplish their goals and those who don't is the system that keeps the focus to consistently improve throughout the year. So in this video, I'm going to cover how to set system for the goals that you're trying to accomplish. And I'm also going to show you a common mistake that most people make when setting goals that negatively impacts your growth. But before we start on how to set systems, I need to talk about why it's still important to have goals despite the fact that it can be vague and not amount to anything. The main reason why goals don't change much for people is because their goals are not concrete. I'm sure most people want to be happy, rich, healthy, but it's too vague and it's too much to handle at once. This is why it's important to have precise goals. Think about exactly what you would do if you were already doing what you needed to do to accomplish that goal. Let's say you wanted to start exercising. Understanding why you want that will help you find exactly what you need to do. Let's say you want general health benefits, then walking daily can be enough. But if you wanted to lose a lot of weight through exercising, then you will have to exercise for up to an hour five days a week and change up your diet. It all depends on why this is your goal. Sometimes you might not know how to reach your goal. In these cases, you can ask other people who reach your goal on how they managed to do it and how they would recommend for you to do it. Take that information and put it in a clear way that tells you exactly what task you need to do to reach your goal. For example, you want to start doing meditation. A simplified goal would be, I will do 10 minutes of meditation every day. A clear goal will allow you to slowly but surely make progress. Once you have figured out exactly what you need to do to achieve your goal, now it's time to start thinking about how to make it easy. What is your ideal situation? What is stopping you from actually doing the task? Let's take the meditation example. If I wanted to start meditating, the ideal situation would be having complete silence and a comfortable place to sit. But in my case, I wouldn't be able to get these circumstances for most of the day because there is noise. I can't avoid the noise, nor can I make it stop. So the only option I really have is to do it early in the morning, late in the night, or do it despite the fact that there is noise. But this is something that a lot of people don't realize. It's not about having the perfect situation. It's about making it as easy as possible. If I have to do it while there is noise, what can I do to make it as easy as possible? I can go in the room that's furthest away from the noise and put my earphones to hear even less. It might not be perfect, but it's good enough. Oftentimes you will have to accept that you will not have the ideal situation. But don't let that stop you. You can make as many excuses as you want, but you're the one who's going to regret not working on your goals. Everyone who tries to achieve their goals have obstacles in their way. Some have less than others, but if you really want to reach your goal, you will find a way to do it. So make your task as easy as possible by removing the obstacles in the way. Now we can make a strategy to start progressing towards your goal. This is where we make a system of daily or weekly action that slowly brings you towards your goal. Depending on the difficulty of the goal and how fast you want to accomplish it, you will find how to start. Let's take the meditation example. If you wanted to do 10 minutes of meditation every single day, but it's too hard to start with it, it's better you start with something you know you can do. Like 3 minutes could be a good start. So your task for your goal would be 3 minutes of meditation every single day or maybe every few days. Simplify the task in your mind by deciding exactly when you're going to do it, where you're going to do it, and exactly how often you're going to do it. For example, I'll meditate 5 days a week for 3 minutes right before I get ready for work on the chair in my room. Put the daily or weekly action in a way that is simple and clear enough that if you were to do it immediately, you would know what to do and how you're going to do it. This next step is the most important step. Do what you're meant to do. You can plan and facilitate your goal as much as you want by making it easy as possible by removing all the obstacles in the way. But if you don't actually do anything, there will be no change. After doing the task for the first time, you'll know how hard it was and if you were able to do it as you planned. If you couldn't do as planned, that's okay. We're just going to have to adjust it to make it a bit easier so you can actually do it consistently. When I had to make a workout plan for my gym class, I initially planned on doing a bunch of exercise, but I soon realized that it is impossible to do. I didn't know how difficult and tiring it would be. I tried to do 15 jumping jacks and do one minute a chair right after that. I didn't plan this through properly, honestly. In hindsight, it seemed obvious that I wouldn't be able to do this when the only workout I did is the workouts that I'm forced to do through school. But sometimes you just don't think about it that deeply. In the moment, you just feel like you can do these things. But you don't really actually know because you haven't really done it. That's why we test and review. If you're able to complete your task successfully, this is where you would think about how hard it was and if you can actually do it consistently. When I was trying to do meditation, I planned on doing it for 10 minutes every single day. But I did it once and I realized that I wouldn't be able to consistently do this. This is why I just did doing 4 minutes of meditation at least 5 days a week. When you make a plan, you don't have to be so strict with yourself. You can cut yourself some slack. Sometimes you will have a bad day, you might be sick or something might have happened in your life that 
made you feel like you really don't want to do this task. But it's especially important to do it in those days, even if it means you will be doing less, because that's how you get to build a habit. Once you consistently work on a task, you will automatically be reminded to work on your goals and it will be way easier. Just like when you wake up and you go brush, it's so ingrained in your routine that you won't even question it. But here's one important step that most people tend to forget. It is to keep reviewing throughout the days, the weeks and the months. Because if you keep staying stagnant and you don't actually progress to the rate that you actually want to, you will not make meaningful changes. Ask yourself questions. How hard is it? Can I keep doing it? Is this really as hard as I want it to be to progress to reach my goal? Maybe it's too easy and I want to progress faster. You have to ask yourself these questions and actually review. You can even systemize the reviewing and adjusting process into the plan. Every week I'm going to review what I was doing and ask myself certain questions to make sure that I'm actually still on the path of accomplishing my goals. So now you know how to set system for your goals, but setting goals is not always positive. Technically the only way to fail is to set a goal. If you wanted to exercise for 3 days a week and you only did it once, you might be disappointing yourself. But doing it once is better than nothing. Why are you seeing it negatively? It's because you set a goal and you didn't reach it. This is one of the problems with goals. It's people take the goal so seriously that it ends up affecting their self-esteem and their confidence in negative ways. Despite the fact that if they made no plan, they would have done nothing. So they made way more progress than what they would have done, but they see it in a negative way because they didn't reach their goal. Sometimes your goal blinds you. Let's say you want to be in a relationship and you end up getting into one, but there's toxic behavior. You know you shouldn't be there, but you end up ignoring those red flags because that was your goal. And so you reached it, you don't want to go back. There are many cases of people who want to work super hard and reach their goal, but they end up hurting themselves because the only thing they're focused on is the goal and they don't care about their health, their mental and everything else in their life. But you also don't want to do the opposite and limit your potential. If your goal is to do one kilometer, you might just do that. But what if you could have ran a marathon? The goals can be negative if you don't do it right. So here's a few things to keep in mind to avoid some of these issues. Focus on the process and not the outcome. Let's say you started exercising to look better and have a six pack. You might feel discouraged when you don't see the progress when you started working out, but don't let that stop you. You're still progressing towards your goal. Keep escalating it and you will eventually reach your goal. Prioritize your health as you're striving towards your goal because you can do everything great, but if your health is not good, nothing's going to be good. You can have the best job in the world. You can have literally anything you want, but if your health is bad, your life will be miserable. It's good to aim high, but don't connect your whole self worth to it. We want to grow a positive mindset while avoiding burnout. When I say prioritize your health, this includes your mental health, not just your physical. Last but not least, be flexible. Don't attach your whole self-worth to your past experiences. Have a growing mindset, not a fixed mindset. Every time you have a setback or failure, don't see it as a negative thing. You get to learn only because you make a mistake. If you always did good, you're only staying stagnant. You're not actually making any change. If you want to make meaningful changes, you need to see failures as opportunities to learn and always be open and ready to adjust to your circumstances. If you want an in-depth look on habit building to set a system, watch this video. It goes over the science of making a habit, so it will help you systemize the process. Thanks for watching.